This is Just Tool Basics, and today we're talking about calipers. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Just Tool Basics. Today's topic is calipers. We're going to talk about a few different basic types of calipers. We have vernier calipers, dial calipers, and digital calipers. Now, you may hear people refer to all of these things as vernier calipers, but technically they're not. The only vernier calipers, so-called because they use this static versus dynamic scale with an interpolated scale, which was invented by Mr. Pierre Vernier back in the day, is the only real vernier calipers, but, and I realize, the guy's name is Vernier, we call them vernier calipers, English is weird. But, I'll be honest, this is not a great set of calipers, it's really hard to read, because the indications at graduations are pretty weak. I'm not going to pretend that I'm an expert at reading these things. I mostly use this one for comparison. You know, like, is thing A the same size as thing B? I'm just going to set these aside because I just wanted to point out what a true Vernier scale looks like. Now, you're most likely to encounter dial calipers or digital calipers. Let's just talk about the basic mode that all of these things measure. So they measure in three specific ways. First is using these outside jaws, and the way that works is you loosen that up a little bit, spread these guys out, and then place the jaws on what you're measuring. So, for example, and you don't need to put a bunch of pressure or anything like that. So, for example, this is about 2.587. Inches, and then, and as you can see, it, it bumps pretty quick, pretty easily because it's delicate. But then, if we wanted to compare that outside measurement with the inside measurement of something else, let's say we had another piece of material that we had some cut made into it, and we wanted to verify it. I realize this isn't a cut, but like you can verify that this inside measurement matches this outside measurement, which it should. The, oh, these, as you can see, these, these blocks are very slightly differently sized. And the last functionality we have is using this depth gauge, which uses this beam, which is riding in the scale. And that, like, let's pretend this is a, a solid block like this. You can use this depth scale to measure down into a hole or whatever. Of course, each of these measurements is reflected in the other one. This depth is the same as this width, which is the same as this width. That's the whole purpose of these calipers. Now, some of the other features of these calipers is, uh, we mentioned the lock screw that allows you to either preserve a measurement. I mean, you could force it, but don't. But it prevents it from being bumped out of the measurement you've taken. And then you just loosen it to use the tool again. This thumb screw that I've been using allows for some better control over the movement of the movable side of the jaws. And then the last one is this bezel lock. So let's say that you're starting out at some measurement and then you lock that guy in place and then say you want to zero out and measure relative to that measurement. You unlock the bezel lock and then spin the bezel around, which includes the face of the dial, and put it back to zero. Relock the bezel lock. Unlock the thumb lock. And now all your measurements are relative to that measurement. So if we wanted to see, if we had another piece of, of, of this aluminum that we wanted to see how much bigger it was, let's say it was twice as thick, then we can see what it is relative to that original measurement. Now, 
realized the dial was spinning wildly and I wasn't paying close attention to what the actual difference was, but that is how the system works. Of course, once you're done doing that sort of stuff with your calipers, you want to reset it back to zero so that your future measurements are accurate. Besides the basics of measuring, these calipers do have kind of secondary functions that they do. Because these these four, not, not this brass thing over here, these are all made of hardened stainless steel, which means that these tips are very hard and quite sharp. So you can use these tips as scribes. What that means, let's get this guy out of the way. If you had your block and you needed to mark a line on it, it doesn't really matter what the mark is. I'll make this a little bit wider though. You have one side of the jaw ride along one of the faces and then use the other tip as a scribe. And I'll, I'm gonna set this down because it's easier that way. And as you can see, that makes a nice little mark right on the face. Now that works in metals, though the harder the metal, the harder it is to mark. So if you're trying to mark tool steel, you may not be as successful. But aluminum, steel, especially if you've put marking fluid on the surface, it easily scratches that away. Plastics, wood, all of those things can be scribed pretty easily using this tool. Both the outside jaws and the inside jaws are sharp enough to scribe. However, these inside jaws are more for marking, you know, the distance away from the face of something. So like this, and they obviously aren't terribly useful, very deep. So in this case, it we're actually hitting the other part of the the calipers, and so it's not as useful. I mean, I'm I don't even remember the last time I used these to scribe something, but the outside jaws regularly uh, used to to do a quick scribe. It's not super accurate if you're letting the lower jaw or the other jaw ride low on the face you're obviously going to get a relatively inaccurate scribe but if you're careful and let it make sure it's up close to the top it's it's reasonably accurate it's not ultra precision but it's good enough for most things while these tools are made of hardened stainless steel as i said this one is made of brass much too soft to try and scribe anything but the softest materials i mean if you're cutting styrofoam sure it'll work fine soft plastic fine but it's not going to mark any metal that is harder than the brass you'll just end up messing up your your calipers so i wouldn't recommend trying it with that and the last thing that these calipers are able to do is not really what they're intended for but with these digital calipers especially let's say we wanted to take 0.566, actually 0.5665, and convert that to millimeters, well, that's 14.39 millimeters. If you need to translate between other tools and things like that, this is a very quick way to convert from metric to imperial. As you can see as well, this guy is an 8-inch version. There's no real limit to the size of calipers, but 6s are the most common, 8s aren't terribly uncommon, but I've seen them as large as 36 inches. If you find yourself getting a set of calipers. Cannot recommend highly enough that you keep the box and keep your calipers in the box because having them get knocked around and knocked out of calibration or, or otherwise damaged, it could completely break the tool, but at the very least it may be making it less accurate. So for me, I keep all of the tools that I have boxes for them in their boxes. Anyway, that's all we have for calipers. Until next time, this is Just Tool Basics.